it's sometimes the the piece, the object itself dictates what the uh, the direction of the piece, and sometimes I just um, I don't always come from an idea. Uh, I almost always come from the piece itself and the direction that it takes will be because of the piece. And I love collecting junk. I like to repurpose. You know, whatever I see, I grab it, I do it, and it starts coming together. This looks like it was a piece of an old oil can, you know, but it worked. It worked for what I was doing. Uh, Here's another piece, and this is stuff that I find. It's not stuff that, you know, I go out and buy. It's mostly all junk that I find. This isn't all the junk. I have piles of these things. I love all of this stuff. And see, it's all junk. It's all stuff either picked up off the street or, uh, or if people have old stuff that they're throwing away, these are the inside to a light bulb that I took apart. So when a light bulb breaks, I take it and then break it apart and take the inside out and use the inside. Sometimes, like in the case of these boxes, they've sat around for a good while before I think, let me, let me see, use them or get rid of them, you know? So I started using them and now, now as I'm working, I'm thinking of more and more things I could do with them. This piece I'm going to work on now is a piece that um, I'm thinking of. We have a show uh, that's called Fiber Options, and I came across all these little baskets, and I was going to you know, give them away to my students, and then I thought, wait a minute, I can use that, and then it'll hang up. I think it's going to just be a wall, a long wall piece. This one I'm calling Haiku. It feels like a... Japanese poem with three lines. You know, I just felt the three uh, pieces itself, the three door plates, everything in the threes, and it, it started to sing to me. That's what I feel like sometimes. It starts to feel good and feel comfortable, and then I think that happens, and that's the success of a piece. This, what I have started here, these are, these are I think they're wonderful, and it's one of those little boxes. But what these are was my mother's encyclopedia. So I started rolling page after page. When you're doing so many, it's like this, this little pile took me a long time because I have to wet each page and roll each page and then wait for the page to dry. I just, I just think they're wonderful. I think they're beautiful. And the, whatever color they're coming out is from their own ink or the age of the paper. And at Pier 1, and at Christmas time, they have all those angels, you know. And so if they would fall or break, they would throw them away. But she said, don't, can I have them to the boss? Because I have a friend that might make something. And so sometimes you'll see me make something with those angels or wings or something like that. Because it was given to me as junk. Postcard, I don't know. Al found it. He likes to look around old junk shops. Inside of that is, you know the little desiccant packets with the silica gel inside? Yeah. You know those little uh -huh. things? Yeah, I collected hundreds and hundreds of them and emptied them out into that little glass uh -huh. box that I built behind there. And she even has the ponytail. Let me show you that part. There's a discussion, I don't know if you know about that. So there's her ponytail and that has a green ribbon on it. And there's a discussion, there are several little dancers that were cast, and wherever you go, always look, because she either has a green ribbon or a pink ribbon. Well, when Degas originally did it, he did it with a green ribbon. But somewhere along the line, somebody put a pink ribbon, so that's the discussion when you go into a museum and see the little dancer. Does she have a green ribbon or a pink ribbon? <laughs> Which I think is kind of funny. But mine has a green ribbon, that's what he did. That's, um, it, it was originally two chairs I found on the side of the road. They couldn't be used. They were really falling apart. So I took them apart. I used the bottom. Uh, the bottom of it is two tops, actually. And so that's the chair. And that's my son and myself. And that's cast paper, uh, raw paper, and uh, cotton rag paper, you know, when you get it and you make the pulp. And then that's my son's portrait and mine. I had a friend who... Uh, 
made surfboards. So we went into their spraying room, suited up and all covered up, and that's painted with car paint. That'll never go anywhere. Uh -huh. I think you just have to work at it. You have to start putting things together and see what works and find the balance in the form. But it's instinctual. I think people just start playing. It's like even when I first started doing it, I just started playing with collage. And then before you know it, the collage has got to, I can put this together and started making assemblage. Mm -hmm. A lot of the sculptures that I make are in the form of a box. They have sides and a back. But that doesn't mean they're a square box like this. It means it can be a different piece, a different shape entirely. I knew I wanted to weld them into something and to come up with a concept. I wanted an ideal when I do welding, I explore the box. Well, then I come upon these plow blades. What do I do with the plow blades? And in this case, it worked this way. It's simple, it's easy, they went on top of the box, but most times when I get a piece like that, I incorporate it somehow into the box to make it really uh, sit with the box and be part of the box. In this case, these are on top of the box, but they work well. It's a found object. When we're doing uh, decks and you have the, fifth, the railing going down and then they have these taut wires in between now, it's a new, what everybody likes to use. They will be threaded in this piece of work. They'll be going across at different levels. Okay, so in making a box, you have to, every, every inch has to be perfect or the box is not right. From conception to realization takes a long time because you, you're constantly working on making things perfect when you make in a box. Sketchbooking is important to me. I do it constantly. Uh, that was one of the things I was taught and that's one of the things I really do. Um, so even if I don't know where I'm going with a piece of work, I'll start drawing circles and it'll always lead me on to something. It's like a warm-up kind of exercise and then it leads me on. So with this piece, I must have been, um, I was thinking about a gate. I wanted to have it to be feel like a portal that even though it's not 10 feet tall, it can feel 10 feet tall, it can be monumental, even monumental in its smallness. Everything has to be clamped down and measured. That's the actual channel that's going in. There, it's lined up. What's gonna happen though, is we needed a tight support because I want the cables to look like they're floating. They could just rest on the bottom of each circle, but I wanted them to look like they're floating. So in, to, to make them look like they're floating, we had to come up with another system. So the system is the piece of wood countersunk with the uh, cable going through it. So now the countersink will be in back of the, in back of this, the actual face. So that was a brilliant idea. And it was just one of the friends who was passing by and said, why don't you use a piece of wood? And it worked. And when it's finished, I'm gonna, um, you know, we clean it up. The, the mill scale, the outside of the metal is called mill scale. I'll uh, clean the mill scale off and then I'll probably put some sort of a black patina on it so that the black against the silver cable will sing. And I may put a stainless steel plate under the, under the bow tie so that it, it will then reflect this stainless steel as well. I don't try to convey a story. If it happens to have one, then yes, absolutely. Uh, when you look at them, people, that's what I like, for the viewer to be able to see what they want to see out of a piece and not what I tell them to see. 
I never make art for the market, I make art for myself. And if the market likes it, then okay. I, I, can't, I can't do that kind of thing. It's just not in me. A lot of times it's art about art, you know. Box making mm. is a little bit obsessive, you know, how do you get a cube, you know, a perfect cube. And so there's nothing, if you look at a cube, it's just a cube, you know, but for me it's more than just a cube. It's making something perfect in a certain way. On. I love those things I'm, and maybe that is my inspiration maybe that's what makes me go ahead and do it and take the unusual object and go ahead and use it and see